In this video, we're going over some of the best spells available to the Ranger spell list, explaining why they're so good and why you may want to use them on your next Ranger. Starting us off at number 10, we have Plant Growth. This is a third level spell that has a casting time of one action, a range of 150 feet, and a daunting 100 foot radius area of effect. The duration of the spell is permanent with no concentration necessary. When you cast Plant Growth, all the plants in a 100 foot radius explode in size, overgrowing the area. Any creature trying to move through the area must expend 4 feet of movement for every 1 foot of movement it would normally use. This means a creature with a standard 30 foot movement speed would have to use all of its movement and take the dash action just to move 3 squares. The enormous area of effect means you can force vast hordes of enemies to get stuck, barely able to move. What's interesting about plant growth is you can choose to exclude certain areas in the area of effect from being overgrown. This makes it one of the few area of effect battlefield control spells that you can shape to avoid hindering your allies. Because of this, Plant Growth allows you to beat a hasty retreat. Also, unlike most battlefield altering spells, Plant Growth is permanent. If you cast it on an area, until someone actively destroys it, that huge area is like that forever. This gives Plant Growth a pretty interesting niche as being usable in large battlefield situations like actual war between armies or in sieges where preparations can be involved. Imagine a ranger with a few days warning setting up nearly impassable chunks of terrain against entire armies. On top of all this, it doesn't even use concentration. So, why is this spell with so many great qualities so low on this list? Well, it only works in places where there are already plants around. So, in a forest, on a hillside, in some plains, places with grass, trees, bushes, and such, this spell is absolutely astounding. But, if you get caught in a stone dungeon or out on a wasteland, then there might not be any foliage for you to explode in growth. Also, it doesn't really hinder flying enemies, and ranged enemies can just sit in it and shoot at you. Despite this, the effect is so powerful, when it does go off that it's hard to ignore. A potentially clever way to get around this is to have a satchel full of seeds to toss out to create super difficult terrain. After all, seeds are just plants that have yet to hatch. Run it by your DM first, but with a trick like this, it can suddenly become a much more versatile spell, really clogging up narrow corridors and dungeons or allowing you to set up a trap that won't ever go away because of its permanent status. Plant Growth is a spell with a great amount of potential power, but it comes with enough limitations that it just barely makes the list. Next up at number 9, we have another low level spell, Sephir Strike. This is a first level spell which requires a bonus action to cast, it has a duration of 1 minute, and does require concentration. Zephyr Strike gives 3 benefits. First, for the duration of your spell, your movement speed does not provoke attacks of opportunity. Secondly, you can give yourself advantage on one weapon attack roll on your turn before the spell ends, and if that attack hits, it deals an extra 1d8 force damage. Finally, you gain 30 feet of movement speed until the end of the turn after the attack. That's a lot of abilities for a first level spell. Zephyr Strike lets rangers functionally disengage for free every turn that you concentrate on them. On top of that, the turn you use a special attack gives you an extra 30 feet of movement speed, which is like taking the dash action. The advantage on an attack and the extra 1d8 damage is okay, it might be useful for finishing off an opponent, but it's not really anything to write home about, as you only get to do it once. Darting and weaving through a pitched combat without being hit is usually a rogue's area of expertise. But Zephyr Strike gives the ranger a way to emulate that by stacking many of the effects of cutting action into a spell. This lets you blitz into enemies at the start of combat as a gap closer, or you could use it towards the end of a fight to finish off a fleeing enemy. Of course, you could always use it to make a tactical withdrawal to let your full casters drop their big AoE spells, but let's be real, who cares about them anyway? While you don't get much out of the damage department, if you need to do a lot of movement on the battlefield, then this is certainly a spell worth your consideration. Taking the number 8 spot, we have Hunter's Mark. This is a first level spell which takes one bonus action to cast, has a range of 90 feet, and a duration of 1 hour with concentration. Hunter's Mark lets you apply a magical mark to a creature that makes it so you deal an additional 1d6 damage every time you hit them. It also gives you advantage on perception survival checks to find the creature. If that target drops to 0 hit points, you can use another bonus action to move the mark to a new target. It is a great way to gain some extra damage with just your bonus action, and considering that most rangers tend to use their regular action to attack in combat, this is a good way to get some bonus damage in for relatively low investment. Importantly, it lasts for up to an hour, which means you can likely use it for multiple fights with a single spell slot. Over 10 rounds of combat, if you're hitting at least half the time, a low level ranger is getting 5d6 out of their first level spell slot, which is a pretty good value. You can also upcast it with a 3rd or 4th level spell slot to increase the duration to 8 hours, or a 5th level spell slot to increase it to 24 hours. Though, that's an incredibly big investment for Halfcaster. If you don't want to really focus on using spells, this is a great way to sort of ignore your spells and just focus on using your weapons. But do be careful, as this does still require concentration, which means you have to watch out and avoid taking damage, as if you fail the constitution save, you've now wasted a high level spell slot. So, these options should be used sparingly. One of the more interesting things about Hunter's Mark is the advantage it gives you to track down a targeted enemy. This really plays into the class fantasy of a ranger being an excellent hunter and tracker. 
One way to utilize this that I don't see many parties utilize is to place this on one of your enemies, then let them escape so you can track them back to their hideout or nest. There are more powerful options to use your concentration on as you gain high levels in Ranger, but this is a staple low level option, and for that it earns a spot on this list. And at number 7, we have Healing Spirit. This is a second level spell that takes one bonus action to cast and has a range of 60 feet. The duration is one minute and it does require concentration. It creates an intangible spirit in a 5 foot square you can see, and any creature that moves into the spirit square or starts its turn there is healed for 1d6 hit points. You can only heal one plus your spellcasting modifier times before the spell ends, or a minimum of twice. The last sentence is actually an official errata, as before that, Healing Spirit was only limited by how many characters could move through it during its one minute duration. If that was still the case, it'd easily be the number one spell on this list, and the number one healing spell in the game. But even with this massive nerf, it is still an incredibly useful spell. Healing Word, a fairly similar level 1 spell, is one of the most widely used spells in the game for its utility as a bonus action to heal an ally or target at range, usually one who is unconscious. Healing Spirit is like an improved Healing Word when it comes to reviving an unconscious comrade because the heal happens at the start of the creature's turn. You can just drop the spirit in the same square as an unconscious ally, and on their turn they'll immediately heal at the start of that turn and be able to take their actions as normal. Unlike with Healing Word, where an enemy might knock your healed ally unconscious again after you heal them up, but before your ally gets to take their turn, as the healing on Healing Word is only a 1d4. On top of that, you get at least two uses out of this. While you would expect a second level spell to surpass the first level one, Healing Word would be an incredible spell for anyone to have access to. And the fact that the Ranger's equivalent is arguably better makes this a great spell for Ranger to have in their arsenal, even after the errata. Sneaking into the number 6 spot, we have Pass Without Trace. This is a second level spell which takes an action to cast and has a 1 hour duration, so long as you keep concentration. Pass Without Trace's effect is quite simple. Each creature you choose within 30 feet of you gains a plus 10 bonus to their stealth checks and are immune to non-magical tracking. Stealth is a tricky aspect of Dungeons and Dragons. A lot of martial characters are very poor at stealth due to the disadvantage their armor imposes, while the dedicated spellcasters don't have the spare stats to invest in dexterity. This often makes having the group move in stealth together a fool's errand, but Pass Without Trace changes that. Even someone with a plus 0 to stealth checks and disadvantage from armor is going to have an average of a 15 on their stealth check while under the effects of Pass Without Trace, which can get your typically far too loud party past medium difficulty stealth situations, and having the ability to drag your bumbling teammates along with you when your stealthy excursions can be invaluable. One of the truest adages in Dungeons & Dragons is to never split the party, and thanks to this you will no longer have to. Infiltration is one of the most common situations that require the breaking of the rule, and this can often lead to problems as the party's combat capability is split up, and even past that, the main reason you shouldn't split the party is because it means that only half the party is actually playing the game, while the other half just sits around twirling their thumbs until the DM shifts back over to their perspectives. But thanks to Pass Without Trace, you no longer have to worry about that, as it lets you keep the entire party together when stealth is the best course of action. This spell has little direct combat value outside of potentially surprising opponents, but keeping your entire party together is incredibly valuable, so it is certainly worth picking up. And at number 5, we have Goodberry. This is a level 1 spell that requires 1 action to cast, and when you cast it, you conjure 10 berries in your hand that have 2 magical properties. The first is that eating one will restore 1 hit point. The second is that a single berry provides nourishment to sustain a creature for a whole day. The berries last for 24 hours before they lose these effects. Goodberry is one of the most handy healing spells in the game, and this is why it has made a number of our list here in the past, so we'll keep this short. You can disperse the good berries amongst your party, functionally giving everybody really weak healing potions they can use on unconscious allies to bring them up. You can give them familiars with flight to have those familiars feed them to your allies when they go down. And if you're in a survival type game, and for whatever reason your DM hasn't banned this spell, then you can use it to feed yourself and your party. If you are a DM who wants to run a survival game, then one way you could nerf this spell is to make it so that while it does sustain the party, they still get hunger pains from not having food in their bellies. It won't kill them, but it could give them disadvantage on ability checks when they have gone two days without food, then 3 days without food to get disadvantage on attack rolls, and 4 days before they now have disadvantage on saving throws. That is all homebrew, but just an idea you could implement if you don't want to ban the spell. Back on topic, another fun thing you can do with Goodberry is use any extra spell slots before you take a long rest to catch it a bunch of times, that way you can make a number of extra berries for the next day. This is possible thanks to the 24 hour duration, rather than a duration like until the next dawn, or until you take a long rest. With this spell, even a second level ranger can provide 20 points of healing at virtually no cost. That's as good as a 4th level Paladin's Lay on Hands, or 2 uses of Cure Wounds. Over the course of a long series of battles where hit dice are running low, during short rests, or short rests aren't available, Goodberry is one of, if not the most efficient healing spell in the game, as you can just have your party munch down in yesterday's spell slots. That's a lot of power and a lot of utility for a 1st level spell slot, making Goodberry a nearly guaranteed pick. Taking a break from the low level spells, at number 4 we have Swift Quiver. 
This is a 5th level spell, and the highest level spell a ranger can cast naturally. It takes a bonus action to cast and has a duration of 1 minute if you can maintain concentration on it. You touch a quiver such that it produces an endless supply of non-magical ammunition. Each turn you can use a bonus action to make 2 ranged attacks when you use the quiver's ammunition. While you don't get anything out of this effect the first time you cast it, each turn afterwards your bonus action is dealing as much damage as your regular action when making an attack. This spell also frees up your action, allowing you to do other things like cast non-concentration spells while still putting out 2 attacks worth of damage each turn. This is one of the few ways in D&D to gain a bonus action attack without requiring you to make an attack with your regular action as well. This spell, in certain situations, is already better than a similar spell like Haste, considering you're getting a full attack's worth of damage while still having your regular action to either attack or take other actions. This spell is also one of the few ways a character can get multiple attacks while being able to do things like take the dodge action. There are some downsides, however. It is a 5th level spell, and that means rangers don't get access to it until level 17. Meaning for most of the campaign, you won't have it at all. It also only works if you're a ranged ranger, so melee rangers won't have much use for it. In spite of those downsides, the sheer power it has to boost your action economy earns it a spot on this list. Coming in at number 3, we have Silence. This is a second level spell that has a range of 120 feet, affects a 20 foot radius sphere, and lasts up to 10 minutes with concentration. When cast, no sound can be created or passed through the 20 foot radius sphere. It also deafens creatures inside it and stops thunder damage from affecting anything inside. Probably the most important thing is that casting a spell with a verbal component is impossible while you're in the zone of silence. While bards and clerics also have access to silence, rangers are the only full capable martial class that can use the spell. This makes rangers one of the most dangerous classes against enemy spellcasters, which are often the most threatening enemies. Most spells in the game require a verbal component. Dropping silence on an opposing wizard and engaging them in combat is a highly effective way of dealing with them. This does affect your allies, but like with any AoE spell, you can choose where it lands. A good combo is casting silence on a battlefield where you have an allied sorcerer who has the subtle spell metamagic, which allows them to remove the verbal component of spells so they can cast in the silent zone. It is also a great utility in stealth situations. Busting open a door and don't want to alert the guards inside? Drop silence to cover the doors. Need to kill or kidnap someone without letting them scream for help? Again, Silence has you covered. This is a very dynamic spell with tons of room for creative use. The fact that rangers have such a great way of implementing it as a combat class makes it a particularly great option for them. Taking the number 2 spawn on this list, we have Spike Growth. Spike Growth is a second level spell that takes an action to cast, has an impressive 150 foot range, has a 20 foot radius area of effect, and lasts up to 10 minutes with concentration. Spike Growth is fairly similar to the previously mentioned Plant Growth, but unlike Plant Growth, this one can be cast on any terrain. It creates a 20 foot radius area that sprouts with spikes and thorns, creating difficult terrain. Any creature passing through a square affected by spike growth also takes 2d4 piercing damage. Unless the creatures saw the spell being cast, they have to spend their action making a perception check against your spell save DC to see it, otherwise they don't recognize it, meaning they have to walk into it before noticing. You can use this spell to completely cut off enemies or divide them into smaller groups. The damage is very nice, especially if you're in a scenario where you're being chased as enemies might just run right through it and eat a hefty amount of damage without getting a save. Even if they do see it, they might be forced to waste multiple turns going around the spike growth as eating up 8 instances of 2d4 damage is a lethal proposition for most enemies. If you drop it right on top of an enemy, they might be forced to take half of that just to get out. In addition to having to use an action to dash to escape as well due to the difficult terrain. This spell can be invaluable for ranged rangers, as you can keep enemies stuck at a huge distance while you pelt them with your projectiles and force them to eat a whole bunch of damage if they want to get close to you. Furthermore, it's even better in enclosed spaces like dungeons, where movement is already limited. If the only way through for an enemy is through the spike growth because the battlefield is choked, then they might be looking at 8d4 damage and a couple of wasted turns no matter what, assuming they want to get into melee with you. All of this is fantastic as this is only a second level spell. Finally, with the number one spot, we have Conjure Animals. This is a third level spell that takes an action to cast, has a range of 60 feet and a duration of 1 hour with concentration. When cast, you summon a number of face spirits who take on the form of beasts. You can choose between 1 beast with a challenge rating of 2, 2 beasts with a challenge rating of 1, 4 beasts with a challenge rating of a half, and 8 beasts with a challenge rating of 1 fourth. Summoning spells are always potentially incredibly powerful. Adding more creatures and action economy to combat always has a big impact. The one caveat is that your DM has final say on what you summon, so they could give you the best beast for the CR, or the worse based on your current environment. Great examples would be summoning 8 giant frogs with the CR 1 4th option. Even with their low stats, they all can restrain an enemy on a successful attack, and 8 attacks gives you a great chance of succeeding. Beyond that, no matter what your DM chooses, it's just an enormous amount of hit points for enemies to fight through. Even in a more enclosed area with little space, there are some strong CR 2 options. Polar bears and giant constrictor stakes are both dangerous and been featured before in our past videos on this channel. Most places should have some kind of wolf, and summoning a pack of wolves to assist you is a classic use of this spell. 
At the end of the day, even something as weak as a horse can still eat a few attacks from your enemies, as every attack aimed at your summons is one less attack aimed at you and your party. And that's the true power of the spell. Even at its weakest, it has incredible capabilities. Contra Admiral being a third level spell also means it comes in about halfway into a range's progression, making it an insanely powerful but not unobtainable goal for them, allowing you to take the top spot on this list. Alright, and that's the list. Do you know of any other range of spells I might have missed that you think should be on this list? Do you have any ideas for other topics you'd like me to cover? If so, leave those as ideas down in the comments below.